Welcome to another episode of Where the Stones Have a Story to Tell. My executive producer, Tully, and I would like to bring the series back here in episode 26 to uh, the baseline, uh, the mean, uh, where we discuss researched and uh, published structures here in Gilbert Hills State Forest. The last two episodes, we really were uh, taking a, a diversion to something that uh, may have been undiscovered previously or may be a figment of my imagination. This episode is completely the opposite. This structure here, I think, is an example of the most referenced, uh, the most observed Native American structure from early first contact days in the 16 and 1700s. This is, in my view of the 120 or so structures I've seen out here, the largest cairn in the forest. You'll also notice that it is made up of uh, many of the smaller sized stones, <clears throat> handheld, which will give you an indication here as we go along of what type of cairn it was. But hang on to the end because there are three characteristics of this cairn that are somewhat unusual and may require further research. So with that, let's get to the details of this cairn. So I'd like to start with the LIDAR. It's going to give us some detail about the smaller stones in here, much different than any of the other cairns or structures with very large stones. Now there are some large stones in here, but you can see very small handheld stones uh, amongst all of them as well. Now it's going to take some measurements. You're going to see that uh, first we'll take it across, all the way across this cairn is 17 feet wide. Then we'll go front to back by the back of that big boulder. You know, that's uh, about 13 feet. And then the height is a little over six feet. So this is a very large pile of stones, larger, but a variety of them smaller. Let's take a look now uh, in the video. You're gonna see how it tails down to the floor. Now off to the right, there is a stone wall. I do not attribute that uh, to Native American structure uh, for a variety of reasons. It doesn't carry over, doesn't have any features in it. So that could easily have been a, a wall of a different uh, era. Now we're gonna come back to that front stone, but we're gonna see here how the, the stones creep all the way over to the top and everywhere underneath those leaves are just the same type of stones. I was not gonna sweep this entire structure off. It is vast. Uh, but we'll just pick a few out here and you can see and that's, you know, tons of small handheld stones, which are going to give us some insight into what this may have been. So there are several types of structures this could have been, uh, and we'll go over some of the historical context. So this is from a NERA article, New England Antiquities Research Association, another small stone there. Uh, that has covered stones or, or cairns of this nature. And one of the types are commemorative cairns. Uh, so brush and stone piles uh, that were used to commemorate an activity or a possible uh, chieftain. So as we travel around the back, you see these large embedded boulders uh, with um, no stones really directly around them. So as we travel around the, uh, the back of this cairn, just want to reference a couple other historic uh, positions. There's a, there is a wall here. Uh, I believe that to be a modern origin, so I'm not going to really include it in the analysis. Cairns of this nature were also known to have commemorated peace treaties or boundaries between tribes. One eyewitness account by the seventh president of Yale University references a stone pile just like this one, about six feet high, uh, and uh, and number of other people in the 1700s who have seen the same thing. So with that historical reference, you're seeing us go around the back. Now the stone wall picks up on the other side. In the middle there was a little pile between the two boulders. Uh, I think that's interesting. Uh, particularly as we go along uh, in the possible alternative theory of what this is. And the alternative, alternative theory uh, is coming up 
This stone wall, while I do think is modern, does have one native feature in it, which I just pointed out that could have been a uh, niche overhang. <clears throat> but I'm going to leave that to the side for a second. There are three issues I have with this structure, and one is coming up here. As we're about 30 or 40 feet off to the left side of it, there's another little cairn uh, nestled between two small embedded boulders. Um, so you got this one on the left, uh, this one on the right, and between the two are a number of stones making up a small cairn. One could draw an analogy between this little cairn and the large cairn with those two big boulders in the back of the large cairn. So you see the back side of this little tiny cairn here, only about, uh, like I said, 30 or 40 feet away from the main cairn. So that's interesting. We are now beginning to add some context around this that may create a deeper mystery. Going back to the main cairn, we're going to turn around as the original camera looked and step away for about 20 or 30 feet and find another small cairn. This one is uh, a split stone cairn. A smaller one, but these two sort of egg shape, if you will, uh, rock with a number of smaller stones in the crack and we're right in front of the main cairn. Um, so those are interesting. Uh, but lastly is this crack in this front embedded boulder. This starts to generate a mystery um, and one that could take us into some alternative research. So uh, notwithstanding the possibility of an eye there, this crack goes all the way around this boulder, but it is not naturally made. Unfortunately, it really has the hallmarks of modern quarry. And I'm gonna go into some examples of that in a second, but a number of holes drilled in this that uh, are not consistent with, that I've found anyway, native, ancient native quarrying techniques. So we've got ourselves a bit of a mystery here. However, that doesn't it's not consistent with modern or 16, 17, 1800s quarrying. So this is an example of a nearby boulder that was quarried. There was a lot of quarrying in Gilbert Hills in the 17, 1800s. But you can see in this crack here that the quarrymen were looking for a much more straight cut straight down to the ground. When they didn't get it here, they just left the stone in place. And we're going to see another example of that in the next image. So here you see another quarried stone, modern quarried. You see the lines in the back on the upper left and this roundish portion falling off to the right. When they got shapes they weren't looking for, uh, not shapes created uh, to help be helpful for building foundations of buildings per se or stone posts, they just left that stone and moved on to another one. So when we take a look at now our potentially modern quarried stone in the cairn, we see a shape that is in no way helpful for the building of uh, buildings or posts. So we've got a mystery here. A stone attached to a very large, potentially commemorative cairn split for some unknown reason by apparently modern tools. I would end by saying that uh, we have some new research from Nira uh, dating certain uh, objects that are known uh, to be Native American origin. One of them was a what I call a leveling mound prayer seat and that was dated uh, into the 16, 17, and potentially even 1800s. Now, you might ask, what does a leveling mound and a prayer seat have to do with a commemorative cairn? Well, nothing directly. However, in the Gilbert Hill State Forest, there are two such leveling mounds. If those were relatively modern Native American structures, then it's possible this cairn, or at least the splitting of the front stone of the cairn was done uh, by natives in the modern times as well. With that, 
Uh, I do want to probably just stay with the original theory here that this is a commemorative, commemorative or trailside cairn, memorial cairn, or treaty boundary cairn. It has all the earmarks for that. Uh, that's well known in the historical record. And so, uh, the, and also appears to be the only one really in this forest. Uh, so with that, I will leave you uh, with the largest cairn in Gilbert Hill State Forest as most probably a large commemorative cairn. Till next time, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.